For most recipes, my biggest problem is that I'm usually missing something. The recipe calls for two cups of flour, and I only have one. It calls for baking powder, and I only have baking soda. I once tried to substitute malto meal for cornmeal, and it didn't work very well. Some ingredients you can get by without, but for most, if you don't have the right ingredients, you might as well just turn the page and try a different recipe. It's never going to work. Last session, we looked at a miracle that was within another miracle, Jesus healing of a woman that nobody else could help. This week, we look at the miracle that was on the outside of that miracle in Mark chapter 5, beginning in verse 22. In this miracle, a man named Jairus seemed to have everything, but finds out he's missing an essential ingredient. He is unable to help his daughter who desperately needs to get well. Every parent's been there. Your child gets hurt or your child is ill and you wish you could take their pain on yourself, but you can't. All you can do is try to find someone who can help them in their area of need. This man, no doubt, had tried every resource at his disposal. Jairus was a synagogue ruler. He would have had tremendous social standing. He would have been wealthy. He would have been well known. And every resource in his community was at his beck and call. But he still came up empty. He knew his need. He knew he had nowhere else to turn but to Jesus. He was willing to risk his social position. Jesus was very unpopular, especially with the religious elite of his day. And yet Jairus was willing to risk his livelihood, willing to risk public humiliation. Why? Because his daughter was dying. He'd do anything to help her. And he knew Jesus had what he needed. So he goes to Jesus and he asks Jesus to come back to his home and help his daughter. And in my mind, it's to Jairus' astonishment that Jesus goes with him. And then Jesus stopped along the way to help the woman that we looked at in the last session. It's not hard for me to imagine what Jairus' reaction to all of that must have been. He must have been thinking, wait, Jesus, my daughter is dying. I know this woman is sick, but she can wait. My daughter doesn't have much time. And he was right. In fact, the time was shorter than he could have even imagined. Mark 5.35 says, While Jesus was still speaking, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Jairus' heart must have sunk to the bottom of his soul. He was too late. He had risked everything to save his daughter and still failed. But then Jesus said something extraordinary. In verse 36, ignoring what they said, Jesus said to the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. Now you can find out the rest of the story by listening to this week's companion message. Suffice it to say, the little girl's funeral arrangements, well, they were a little bit premature. For right now, Put yourself in the sandals of this synagogue ruler. Powerful, socially respected, a mover and shaker in the New Testament world, none of which mattered when his little girl was sick. How much would you give up to see Jesus? What would you let go to follow him as Savior and Lord? How desperate are you for what only Jesus is able to do? You see, the difficulty is, until we recognize our need, you won't know any of that. To make Jesus Lord of your life means nothing else can be Lord of your life. Not your job, not popularity, not social status, not financial gain, not even good things in life like love, respect, and family. It's not that those things are bad, it's just they can't give you what only Jesus can. 
I've often wondered what happened to Jairus and his daughter after this. Uh, no doubt, the Jairus must have had a much greater understanding of the significance of the relationship between a parent and child. He must have had a brand new understanding of who Jesus was too. Did he become a follower of Christ? Well, we'll only find out in eternity. But it's hard to imagine that he didn't. How could he not? Jesus walked into his house and raised his daughter from the dead. I can't help but imagine that in time, he realized he had an even greater need than the healing of his daughter. He had his own need for forgiveness and everlasting life. Until we recognize our need, we can't find that one thing we need most desperately. Until we recognize our own need, we can't find that. But here's the great news. When we do, when we recognize how desperately we need what only Jesus can give us, He'll tell us the same thing that He told Jairus. Don't be afraid. Just believe. In honor of a miracle involving a father and a daughter, this session's recipe is my daughter's favorite cookie. I make them for her every Christmas. Hope you enjoy one of our family's favorite cookies, pinwheel cookies.